Hey, what's up guys, Wolfcore here, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Episode number six, I think we're on. Uh, so what we just did was went on our first date with uh, Matt here, the musician. We just got back from a concert. We saw Pup the Punk Band, and they were pretty fantastic. Uh, all things considered, other than my initial joke when we met for the date, that was not well received. Things are going great. I like Matt, he seems to like me. He asked me out to dinner, and here we are, so let's just hop right into it. Uh, Matt and I walk to a tiny little diner with a cute neon sign. We tear into some bacon and eggs in a corner. Hey! So there I am, in the pit, trying to explain to the face tattoo guy that I didn't mean to elbow him in the face tattoo, but he's already seeing red. <laughs> Not from the tattoo, which coincidentally was red. <laughs> he's lumbering toward me, and there's hey. nowhere to go. It's the end for me, right? Then out of nowhere, I get this idea. I just lean back and spread my arms, and just like that, I'm crowd surfing away from him in slow motion. You should have seen the look on his face. He's a genius, an adorable genius. Hey. Bought him a beer afterwards, and we were cool. We still follow each other on social media. He has beautiful kids. <clears throat> Glad you guys worked it hey. out. Yeah, man, just goes to show. You think punk's not dead, it just drives a minivan and has to hire a babysitter. So how did you get to see all of these amazing concerts? Hey, yeah. Uh, oh, I used to tour in a band. We were small, but I got a, but it got us to travel all around the states. Whoa. Uh. Yeah, I mean, we were poor and we had to scrape a lot together just to survive, but I wouldn't trade those experiences for hey, anything. Dude. But yeah, that's how I knew a bunch of those people at the show. Music like this builds an amazing community, especially in a town like this. Just a lot of positive energy and good vibes. I got that feeling. Plenty of friendly people, especially that Pablo. Guy. Hey. Oh man, everybody loves Pablo. His mom's been raising him on her own, and you can tell that it's been tough on both of them. I know he l looks up to me, so I try to help him out whenever I can. That's really nice of you. Oh. Thanks. Us single parents just really have to look out for each other. How's Carmen Seta? She says she wants to learn the drums. Oh boy. Hey. It'll be loud and I'll need to take a lot of aspirin, but I'll manage. Can't really blame her. I'm suddenly very grateful that all of my daughter's hobbies are super quiet. Photography, collaging, whatever it is that she does on the internet. Thanks, Amanda. Mm. I'm trying to be supportive of Carmen Seta's rebellious phase, but I guess that kind of defeats the purpose of it, doesn't it? I think it would be a good daddy-daughter activity to find something to rebel against together. Hey. Like what? Um, consumerism? Uh, why do we gotta get up early the day after Thanksgiving and line up to buy things? Why can't we, like, share things? Hmm. Comrade, you're speaking of dangerous things here. <laughs> he and I laugh. <laughs> we keep digging into our big plates of greasy dinner food. The breakfast I ordered for dinner is absolutely hit hey. the spot. Man. Hey. Being a single dad is rough sometimes. It's lonely feeling. I understand that all too well. I mean, at least we have the rest of the dads to talk to. Hey, yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Hmm. I get really nervous sometimes talking to people. Matt gets nervous talking to people, but he's so cool. Me too. I never really consider myself an extrovert and never really consider myself an introvert. I'm just uncomfortable in every situation always. Hey. <laughs> ah, you're fine. You're actually really easy to talk to, you know that? I smile. Matt and I spend the rest of the night trading daughter stories. Turns out our kids are a lot alike. We finish up our late night dinners and head out. We walk back to the cul-de-sac, back to our respective uh -huh. houses. Tonight was a blast, man. Loved it. Although I'm probably gonna feel it in my knees in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Hmm. I, uh, I don't usually like going to these things alone. It was really cool to have you here with me. I'm hey. glad. All right, I'm calling it quits for the night. Stay cool, man. He called me cool. Matt called me cool. Oh, that does feel cool. I walk into the house with my heart in my throat. Amanda pops her head out from her room. Hey, Pops. How was the show? Matt thinks I'm cool. You don't say. Amanda Panda. Matt thinks I'm cool. <laughs> blind leading the blind, huh? Wow, I just got dunked on by my own child. Unbelievable. All right, I'm hitting the hay pops. I'll see you in the pit. Night, kiddo. Date complete. Nice. Oh, yeah. Dad.
bad boy. Whoa, we got a yeah, lot of points. I C. the whole set. Oh man, I, I, I thought it. I thought it did better than a C, but okay. Um, awesome. Well, family vacation, cell phone holster, cool. Scott, coffee. I don't understand what all these graphs and bars mean. Oh, and we got King of Carrot Flowers, the achievement. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumble, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. Coupons. Don't get excited for coupons. The nice mail person slides a couple letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda! She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay. Just thought you'd want this big old yellow envelope we got from the HIA. Yeah. Immediately, Amanda pushes through her... <laughs> immediately... <laughs> immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts. I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And? The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreal. I can't believe this. Oh, honey. It's okay if you didn't. I got in! Hell yes! 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 Okay. Oh, I got in. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview, and your photography is incredible. Wait, Dad? I know this one's really expensive, and it's so far away. I think for a moment, HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. <sighs> really? Of course! Amanda hugs me again. Hey. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Whatever yeah. you want. Wherever? Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. Oh, I, I want a burrito now. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes and there are all these galleries nearby and there's a discount if you bring your student ID. And Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke in your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. I didn't mention that students got their own studio space once they're seniors and we get all the professional photo editing software for free. That's actually super cool. That kind of makes me want to go to art school. I actually started going to art school, never finished. It's nice to see you, Amanda, so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. Oops, oh no, I hit the space bar. Oh, curses, I'll never know. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with somebody with a similar major and interests. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were, uh, good roommate can be a lifelong friend but don't even get me started on bad roommates oh no i'm just kidding we didn't have any bad roommates our only other roommate was a puppy that craig brought home one night we spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark carl yeah. oh they let you have animals in the dorms if you get a note saying you need one I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit or maybe a snake or maybe both. Would the snake eat the rabbit though? Oh boy, I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So you know, I had that talk with Mr. Vega. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No? <laughs> I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. I think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays. There's going to be some treacherous ice roads to cross. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Oh, Dad, don't cry. 
Sorry, I'm just very proud of you. You're all grown up now and you're such a good person and I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're gonna make me cry too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's gonna make it taste sad. <laughs> I pull Amanda in for a big hug and kiss her on the back. I love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. All right, back to the dad book. So we hit up Matt, and I... Okay, so that's what the hearts represent. So we get one heart per date. Um, but we should probably date around a little bit, right? I mean, I do like Craig, and I do like Brian. And yeah. So why don't we send... Oh, oh it's, it's so tough. It's really tough. Craig, okay. Um, let's message him. I wonder what Craig's up to today. I navigate to Craig's dad book page and type out a message. Hey, bro, or should I say neighbor, let's catch up like old times. A couple moments pass before I hear a ding on the computer. It's a message from Craig. That was quick. Bro, my man, let's definitely hang soon. Might be a little different from our old weekend long benders, but it'll still be fun. I think for a moment. This could be a fun opportunity to see my old buddy in his new element. We exchange a couple more messages and he logs off to prep for the game. I should see if Amanda wants to join me. I walk over to Amanda's room and knock on the door. Yo, Amanda Panda. I open the door and find Amanda sitting cross-legged on the floor, surrounded by magazines and newspaper clippings. She seems to be making some sort of art piece. What you working on? Just a collage for class. We're supposed to make a piece that represents our goals for the future. I take a closer look at her collage. That's a lot of huh? dogs. It's mostly dogs, yeah. Did you need something? Craig invited us to a softball game oh. a while ago. Remember that one time you signed me up for softball and you bought me all the gear and then you took me to the first game and then someone hit a ball toward me and I just ran off of the field crying? And then you hid in the dugout and would scream if I tried to pick you up? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Burned into my memory, matter of fact. I was afraid of baseballs. I thought you were a gigantic, sentient softball. I thought... Oh. <laughs> so does that mean you don't want to go? Amanda gets up and looks me dead in the eye, determined. Ugh. I'm finally ready to face my fears. Head on. Let's do this. Hell yeah, Amanda. Hell yeah. Amanda and I make this short drive out to the local softball field for a kid's softball game. It's pretty packed. We clamber up the bleachers and take our seats on the top row. I don't see Craig anywhere. Ugh. So when do the kids start crying and running off the field? You know that your relationship with softball is different from everybody else's relationship with softball, right? Okay, but if I don't see some kid crying, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. <sighs> For nostalgia's purpose, of course, not because I take joy out of children fighting for my amusement. Eh? Definitely not that. The game starts and the kids run out onto the field. I see Craig by the dugout with a clipboard. He has River strapped to his chest, as per usual. There's a guy in a pancake costume doing jumping jacks across the field. I guess that's the mascot. The fighting pancakes? Eh, I'm not gonna judge, I like pancakes. Reading the kids' brightly colored jerseys, I see that it's the Maple Bay Flapjacks. Ah, against the Pinewood Ocelots. Go Flapjacks. Oh, man. Choke up on the bat, Miranda. <laughs> yeah, Miranda, square up. How much do you know about softball? Enough to know that the balls are relatively hard despite their huh? name. <laughs> but yelling is fun. <laughs> Give it a shot. It's cathartic. <laughs> Keep your eye on the ball. What's important is that you're having fun. What are you willing to sacrifice to win? What's important is that you're having fun! Go friendship and kindness. <sighs> Dad, could you kick it up a notch? Maybe throw some spice on that papaya? <laughs> sure thing, honey. I believe in you, Miranda! We watch a couple innings of softball. They aren't ready for the major leagues yet, but Craig's training has his team pretty well. It seems like he's really good with the kids. Keg Stan Craig is good with children. Whoa. It's amazing how hard they're hitting the ball and how no one has run off the field crying yet. Amanda, dear, you have to let it go. Hmm. Let what go? I'm perfectly fine. The opposing team is up at bat. They hit a fly ball out of out into center field. The tiny little girl tries to get the tiny little girl tries to get under the ball, but it's misses her glove and hits her straight in the forehead. Uh oh. Whoa. See? It's a complete completely justifiable fear. 
The girl plops down on the grass and starts crying. Craig makes a beeline to her, checking her forehead and comforting her until her parents arrive. He carries her off of the field as she sobs. Oh. Man, it's strange to think about how this was the guy who once flipped off of a roof and into a pool while shotgunning a beer. He's so responsible now. Oh, that was backflipped. Backflipped. The game resumes after the girl calms down a bit. Now we watch a couple more innings. Craig's team is crushing the other team in the ninth inning. The ocelots seem to have given up by this point. I see one off-fielder eating fistfuls of grass. Uh, a batter on the other team knocks a foul ball into the stands. I follow the trajectory and... Oh no, it's coming right for me. Oh no, 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 no. I close my eyes and brace for impact. Ouch. I open my eyes and look over to see Amanda holding the softball, staring at it. I open my eyes and look over to see Amanda holding the softball, staring at it in amazement. Whoa. Wow, I caught the ball. You saved me. I caught the ball, Dad. I caught the ball. You did it, Amanda. I faced my fears. I defeated the softball. I can do anything. Amanda and I share a big hug. It's a tender moment that I don't think anyone else watching really understood. I'm proud of you, kiddo. The game ends, and Craig's team are declared the victors. We sit patiently as the girls line up to shake hands. Mm. Great job, everyone. We walk over to the dugout to congratulate Craig, who's talking with some of the parents. Craig, great work, oh. man. Thanks. We've been working hard all season, and it's great to see it paying off. I'm so proud of all my girls. Speaking of which, have you met Briar and Hazel? No, I haven't. Hi, Briar and Hazel. Hello. Hey, killer playing out mm. there. Yeah, you guys rule. Thank you. You guys are twins, huh? So which of you is the evil one? Hazel. <laughs> yeah, it's me. Oh. <laughs> Good looking up. Do you guys ever pretend to be each other? I don't have a twin, but I think if I did, I'd be doing that constantly. Yeah, I take all her math tests. And I usually throw rocks at stuff. When people get mad, I tell them I'm Briar. <laughs> what? We will talk about this later. Wolf, bro, I just got a couple more things to clean up, then we can hang. Sounds good. Just then, one of the moms jumps into the conversation. Not so fast. We have to celebrate our win, Craig. I'm talking. I'm taking the whole team to get pizza. I oh, I don't know if I can. Nonsense. The girls won. What sort of celebration could we have without our fearless leader? She lays her hand on her sh on his shoulder and gives him goo goo eyes. Man, this mom is laying it on thick. Amanda and I share a look. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Is it cool if my bro comes along? The mom looks slightly put out, but can covers it up with a smile. Of course. <sighs> Janet. Janet, freaking getting in the way of my date. Where are we going? Thirsty's Pizza? What? Yeah. What? That's a real place? Apparently. Apparently it is. Well, I think that's a good stopping point. Uh, why don't we find out in the next episode how our date with bro Craig goes. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys all so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. I love your faces so much. Uh, Beardheart, like the video if you haven't yet. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love to have you. And I'll see you guys next time with some more Dream Daddy.